What's going on, everyone? So today I got a really exciting list for you, and that is Gar Saxon Upgrade Aggro with Cunning as our secondary aspect. I got uh, the idea to make this video again for one of my patrons. They were talking about how they were fighting Gar Saxon Yellow, and it was pretty sweet to fight against. And I had toyed around with the list previously, but I finally decided to dive in and actually commit a lot of time testing. And actually, I have been really impressed with this list. A lot of lists I've been going over lately um, have been kind of more on the fun side and maybe like a B tier. This one has actually been pretty impressive. And while I can't say for sure what I'll rate it, I will say I have been way more impressed than with the results than I thought initially. Before we get started with this, big thank you again to my patrons, guys. We have a lot of discussions in there and, uh, well, a lot of the ideas for my videos come from there. So if you want to join in and maybe get in some games with me or just chat with me directly, check that out down below. And be sure to use my TCG player link in the description down below because it helps me out as well as helps you out. And thank you once again. So Gar Saxon Yellow, why Gar Saxon Yellow? A lot of the times I've been playing Gar Saxon Green, there are some really strong reasons to do so. For example, you get Energy Conversion Lab, which is a really strong addition to your deck. But with Yellow or with Cunning, you get some really, really amazing additions, especially in the earlier plays slot. And it actually turns into a very powerful aggro deck. And I'll show you some of the reasons why. Gar Saxon, for those of you that don't know, just makes it so that every friendly upgraded unit that we have gets plus one, plus oh. Very basic, very powerful if you're able to get it consistently. Now, one of the big problems with this is that you have to pair your units with upgrades. So the best case scenario is to play a unit that has an upgrade attached to it when you play it, right? You don't want to be playing actual upgrades in your deck for the most part, because then you have this like weird mix of I have upgrades, I have units, I'm not drawing the right you know, cards to, to get what I want. And this adding cunning to it really solves that issue a lot. He flips for six resources and still has that same static buff on the flip side as a four, seven, and then also states any upgrade that's attached to your unit. Whenever that unit gets defeated, you can return it to your hand. Not really that relevant since we don't actually have a lot of upgrades in the deck, but what are we running? Why are we running cunning? Well, let's talk about really there's three major cards that I'm really excited about. The first one being Crafty Smuggler. Seems a little bit awkward to talk about Crafty Smuggler as one of the most exciting cards in our deck, but you have to remember that Crafty Smuggler is one of the most powerful and potent threats in a Boba Yellow deck. Why? Because it's really hard to get off the board, right? A 2-2 shield, it usually is going to trade at least one for one for any early units, but also just takes your opponent a lot of time to deal with. Now think about it in our deck. It is a 3-2 shielded when it comes down. That is immensely better than a 2-2 shielded because there's a lot of units with a three toughness stat line early on into the game. The second unit I got to talk about is Dr. Evazon. Remember, we already know how strong Dr. Evazon can be in certain matchups as a 3-3 shielded, but in our deck, it is a 4-3 shielded on turn one, which is pretty crazy. There are still downsides with Dr. Evazon, so we do have to be a little bit careful because that bounty can really wreck us in certain matchups. So some matchups, it's not as good, but base level, 4-3 shielded in our deck. The third card that we got to talk about is 7th Fleet Defender. Again, 3-2 shielded, usually going to trade one for one for all of your normal threats on the battlefield. But in our deck, it is a 4-2 shielded when it comes down, all of which don't require any outside assistance. But just because we're playing Gar Saxon, we get an immediate power buff on these three units, just straight out the gate. Another really, really powerful reason to be in Cunning is Snapshot Reflexes. This is essentially our version of Surprise Strike, and I'm playing it in place of Surprise Strike. Surprise Strike giving you that plus three, plus zero stat line and attacking with that one, you know, attack really strong in our deck snapshot reflexes is essentially a permanent plus two plus one stat line while also giving us that immediate attack with it that is really powerful and remember you're not limited to ground units with this upgrade and it's really important that i didn't play any upgrades that were limited to ground units because we have a lot of space units in the deck another card that we are running that is in cunning that i'm really excited about is lurking tie phantom we've seen how powerful lurking tie phantom can be in basically every matchup uh, but in some matchups it is super super game winning 
and that's going to be pretty powerful. A couple of cards that I wanted to explicitly mention because they're just exciting in our deck. The client is a 3-5 shielded when it comes down for three resources. Really, really quite powerful. We also have Lom Pikes who can be smuggled out and guarantee give us a shield token, which is also going to give us plus one power to certain units. We have Super Commando Squad, which is a 5-4 shielded Sentinel that comes down on turn four, which is also really strong. And we also have some other kind of minor synergies. We have a minor Imperial theme, things like Inferno 4, 7th Fleet Defender, and Lurking Tie Phantom, as well as the client, all our Imperial materials so tie advance gives us plus three power and plus two uh, toughness when it comes down if there's no upgrade already so for example you've already hit something with the client so now it's a two five again you put tie advanced experience tokens on it guess what it becomes a five seven that's really obnoxious lurking tie phantom becomes a five four but a seven four on attacks like this is just really oppressive stuff a couple other cards i do want to mention is we have a little bit of a removal suite in our deck uh we have takedowns fell the dragons and rivals fall for various different matchups some are better than others in certain matchups i kind of like this breakdown because usually the cards that we struggle against a little bit are things like podamron wrecker so you really want more fell the dragons than takedowns rivals fall can help us against certain leaders and uh, we also have some other upgrades to talk about we have devotion really nice on a space unit early on against some of the aggro decks rich reward if you put this on enemy units claim it you get two upgrades spread across two units that can also be incredibly powerful we also have a few kind of filler pieces um gideon is just a solid you know five resource play we have boba fett a solid three resource play nice stat line that could be pretty relevant we also have incinerator trooper another imperial unit early on in the game if you get this down and you happen to have like a snapshot reflexes in your hand you can go incinerator trooper take initiative snapshot reflexes kill their unit now you're left with a four three first striker or someone that can deal damage before your opponent deals damage that can take over games and then also covert strength really nice smuggle option from our smuggle pile uh for resource pile giving something an experience token and healing two damage can really really help out in certain scenarios that's going to be the deck, guys. I'm really excited about this one. I've been playing it a lot, and I've been having really nice results with it. So hopefully I can reflect that here today in our games. Let's see what we can do. Into our first matchup, and unfortunately for us, this is a matchup that can actually get a little tough in terms of just Cad Bane being on uh, or in, in the game. Not going to mulligan this. Totally fine. Turn one into turn two. Probably going to resource this Boba Fett and the Incinerator Trooper. Not sure I haven't really seen uh, Cad Bane Blue, but we're going to go ahead and drop it in Inferno 4, bottom, bottom, really looking for more units to get out on the battlefield. Inferno 4 really can't be killed by the Cad Bane, and looks like they had a Cloud Rider, um, which doesn't really do a whole lot. They're trying to ambush something, so we ended up just getting a free initiative, essentially. Covert Strength looks pretty nice here, but I'm just going to drop a Client 3-5 once again. Amazing unit. If they play a unit that's an underworld unit, we can always ping the uh, Inferno 4 because we get the choice to do so. And we can keep the shield on the client, which can be relevant here um, later on in the game. They have an enticing reward, which actually pumps up our Inferno 4. Because remember, friendly units that are upgrade get plus one, plus zero. And uh, well, looks like they have a Ma Klunky, so they're going to bounce. Uh, we can deal one damage to the Inferno 4. They're going to deal three damage to the Inferno 4 anyways. And they're going to return that to the hand. Um, looks like we got a Lurking Tie Phantom. Love that. I'm going to put the other one on bottom. But Lurking Tie Phantom is going to be excellent because it's going to soak up every single damaging hit for Cad Bane. They got Takedown and Enticing Reward. Um, and they put a top target on the client. We're going to go to resource that Lom Pike here. And uh, I'm pretty sure that they're just interested in Takedowning my client. So we're just going to drop a Lurking Tie Phantom here to get us started because any sort of damaging ability or something we can absorb with the TIE Phantom. And they're going to take down the client. And uh, the reason why I didn't attack or anything beforehand is because they had top target on their, their uh, the, the client. So if I attacked, it wouldn't have mattered because they would have healed the entirety of that anyways. Dr. Evazon's not a card I really want to be seeing at this stage in the game. And uh, I'm going to be devotioning up my lurking TIE Phantom. We're usually pretty safe to go all in on Lurking Tie Phantom, especially in a matchup such as this one, where they are focusing on um, really trying to uh, essentially just control the board. Looks like they had Waylay, which is a really nice answer to um, what I got going on here. Hopefully they don't have Make an Opening. Looks like they had exactly Make an Opening, so our opponent kind of has the perfect hand. Um, they have a Power of the Dark Side as well, so this is really going poorly for us. Um, looks like tie advanced that seems to be a pretty reasonable draw here we're going to play a um a seventh fleet defender 
So our opponent has had an absolutely amazing hand here to deal with everything that we're looking for. I couldn't really wait for Garsex. I could have played these cards before, I suppose, but um, it's really tough to do that and try to like leverage um, damage on our opponent, right? Our opponent just had a really nice, nice hand to deal with everything that we had. Um, we're going to hope that they don't have Super Laser Blast. We're going to drop a TIE Advanced and pump up our Inferno 4. And then we're just going to get in for some damage here. Attack for 5. What an awesome hand for our opponent. They're going to Enticing Reward. We're going to get in for 4. And we're going to Claim Initiative. Long Pike come out with a resource pile. So we're going to go to resource that one. We also have the Covert Strength just to to keep that in mind. So we're gonna attack for five. They could have Super Laser Blast. It looks like they do. Bottom, bottom. So they sacrifice Cad Bane here. No big deal. Let's go ahead and get a Boba Fett down and we're gonna smuggle out a Long Pike. Let's smuggle out a Long Pike and pass. Lurking Tie Phantom is excellent. We do want more of those in this deck. Let's go ahead and get rid of this Snapshot Reflexes. I think that's totally okay here. Super Laser Blast Part 2. So opponents kind of got everything. We're going to go ahead and actually Covert Strength Smuggle here. Um, just so that we can get it out of range of Make an Opening. And then we're going to pass. So opponent had double Super Laser Blast. They had the Make an Opening plus Waylaid combination for the first uh, TIE Phantom. Um, what did they grab after Enticing Reward, by the way? I couldn't see. I, I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully they don't have another Waylay. Wele is really good against the TIE Phantoms. We have Fell the Dragon if they have like Avengers to potentially end the game here. Um, it looks like they have Bounty Hunter crew and they are picking up. What do they grab? What do they grab? Uh, I have no idea what they grabbed. Did they not grab anything? Hmm. Not quite sure what they got. Um... Oh, they're, now the result. It was my trigger because gotcha. So they're going to get Waylay here. That's fine. Let's go ahead and hit with Lurking Tie Phantom. They're going to be wanting to Waylay the Lurking Tie Phantom. So we're going to attack with that first. Get in as much damage as we can. They're going to claim initiative. We're going to attack. Um, and now we're going to actually smuggle out the Lom Pike. And the reason for this is... If they don't have a super laser blast, then they kind of die. And if they super laser blast, then they're really, really in trouble. So here we're going to attack with the seventh fleet defender since more things actually kill the seventh fleet defender than the long pike. And now we have long pike to finish out the game. So even though they had a really nice start against us, and I think I made a mistake with power of the dark side. Um, I didn't think through all the options they had, but they had a perfect answer to everything up until Gar Saxon. The tie phantom really is a key winner here. They had the waylay to deal with it early. They had a double super laser blast. They had the takedown for the clients. They even had to, the ability to draw a couple of additional cards. And we still got there. And that's mainly just because TIE Phantom is just so absurdly strong against these styles of decks. You could really just pump it up, right? That's why I went with Covert Strength. That's why I was trying to pump it up in general is because you want to get it out of range of make an opening because that's one of the few ways that these decks have to answer. But they weren't really winning the game at any point. Um, it was just a matter of they were stopping us from winning the game. Strong first game. Nice long game. Cad Bane Blue. Pretty sweet. Into our next matchup. Uh, and this looks like a totally reasonable hand. Unfortunately for us, this Boba Fett isn't like a 7th Fleet Defender, which makes something like TIE Advanced a lot stronger. I'm going to go ahead and resource this Fen Rao and probably the Crafty Smuggler because I want to go with Dr. Evazon on turn 1. So we're going to drop a Dr. Evazon. It's going to be really tough for Ray to put something on the battlefield that doesn't die to Dr. Evazon. One of the few things that she could play would be like an R2. Uh, but if she leads with Battlefield Marine or Moisture Farmer, huh? Moisture Farmer is one of those cards that does not die to Dr. Evazon. So that is something. Um, I think... Oh, okay, never mind. I changed my mind. They... I'm going to hit their base for four. They... Got the experience on Moisture Farmer, which made me tempted to go ahead and just snapshot reflexes the Moisture Farmer, because that would have killed it and left behind a 4-4. But drawing the 7th Fleet Defender makes it so that I really want to go ahead and tie advanced up my um my 7th Fleet Defender. 
I'm going to go and resource one of the tie advanced and I'm just going to immediately attack for four here. And my opponent could take down, um, which probably is going to be directed towards Dr. Evazan if they go with some sort of removal. I'm going to put an experience token on R2. Seems reasonable to me. Let's go tie advanced up the seventh fleet. They have a devotion, huh? Wow, that is one massive R2D2. <laughs> um, they're going to hit the base for four, and we're going to claim initiative. They're healing for a turn, but we're also dealing massive chunks of damage. Let's go to resource this Lom Pike. And I think we just immediately attack for six here with the Seventh Fleet Defender. They're going to fell the dragon, which is fine because we are going to attack their base for four. They're going to heal a little bit. We are going to snapshot reflexes attack for five. And then I think what I want to do is just claim initiative because we have a lot of power here. Going to get another experience token. Our opponent's on like two units and so are we in a sense, um, which is kind of funny. Let's go ahead and attack with Dr. Evazan to start us off. And if they have no way to answer this, um, to, uh, okay, that is a way. Uh, now I just flip Gar Saxon and I can still finish the deal because they can only heal two. So we win. Take down on the uh, tie advance is totally fine because they don't have enough healing to get out of range from the um, Gar Saxon kill, and that's going to be GG. Pretty interesting little matchup there. Normally, uh, <laughs> I don't expect a Moisture Farmer into R2, double one drops, all in with experience tokens and upgrades, and then backed up by removal to be the sort of play that my opponent's making. I think they made a little bit of a mistake in the earlier turns. Uh, I don't know if they had both of these cards or just one of them, but getting Dr. Evazan killed by like a takedown or something is really oppressive into another removal. And heck, even if they didn't have both these cards, I think they should have traded off with the Dr. Evazan with um, some of their units instead of just going into my base. Since racing for them isn't what you want to be doing with Ray, usually you usually want to be flipping Ray and healing up a ton. After you flip Ray, you can then race. But getting rid of my Dr. Evazan would have put me in a really bad spot since they would have had four points of restore every turn and they would have been able to potentially leverage additional resources and i don't really want to be trading with them so anyways good game on to the next one into our next matchup against yellow tarkin and this match or this hand is so close if one of these seventh fleet defenders one of these cards was a two resource play this would be like a dream hand but because it's not we're going to mulligan and honestly we ended up with a pretty solid one to follow it up we have a really nice inferno four if we want to go that direction or just the crafty smuggler I am leaning towards uh, getting down this. I would like to get down this in uh, crafty smuggler. So I think I'm just going to resource the Inferno four and the client because I'm going to go crafty smuggler into most likely seventh fleet defender and they're going to claim initiative on turn one, which is a really weak play. If you're playing yellow Tarkin and your turn one play is claiming initiative, I, I would say that you're probably on the back foot. We'll see what our opponent has to kind of follow up that play i'd be i'm curious to see what they've got one of the big things with target is that you get down an early play when your opponents can't really deal with it and then you're able to go ahead and leverage the fact that uh well you could start putting experience tokens on it this also is a pretty weak play turn two triple dark raid because they're going to get in for four damage and it's going to bounce back to their hand essentially wasting their resources since we're going to be ahead on the race now I am in a very, very good spot overall. We can get down a Boba Fett. We can put up a Devotion on something. They're going to go no good to me dead. Which Again, these like tempo oriented plays where they're giving you a temporary advantage when you don't have... Um, yeah, they say they've drawn badly. It's exactly what I was saying is this can happen with Tarkin. If you have a lot of these tempo plays and all this stuff, it can be really, really unfortunate. And it looks like, as our opponent said, they, they don't really have the early pressure that you're really looking for when you're playing Tarkin Yellow. Playing, again, the tempo plays is going to be really, really a struggle. So it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. It happens. Looks like they conceded. <laughs> um, 
And yeah, I, it just seemed like they had a bad hand. Literally from turn one, taking the initiative, as I mentioned, is a really, really uh, unfortunate place to be. It puts you on the back foot. And then when you have all these tempo plays that you can't really get to the board, it's also going to put you really far behind. And that's exactly what happened. And to be honest, based on what I've got in hand and based on sort of what Yellow Tark is usually doing, this game was probably over already. This turn, I was going to get down Super Commando Squad. It was going to be a 5-4 Shielded Sentinel, so they couldn't even get in for damage. We're going to start getting in for large chunks of damage ourselves. We're going to be able to flip Gar Saxon soon. They can't even attack with Tarkin because we're going to have that Super Commando Squad. It's going to get in a lot of damage if they do. So yeah, we were just in a great spot. So sorry for our opponent. A little bit of an unfortunate hand, it looks like, for them. And uh, on to the next one. Okay, into our next matchup, hopefully. Uh, we'll see if our opponent actually ends up deciding who goes first. We've been doing pretty well so far with this Gar Saxon Yellow. As I've said, it's been pretty impressive. Boba Green here, they don't have ECL, which makes me incredibly less afraid of our opponent's deck. That's just, you know, what it is. If our opponent's playing ECL Boba, I'm a lot more scared. If our opponent's not, honestly, Boba Green, not as scary as it once was. We have a pretty nice hand. We have a Crafty Smuggler and a Boba Fett. I really like Rich Ward. Um, and we have a decent curve here. Having shielded units with the Rich Ward can really benefit you quite drastically. Got ourselves a Lurking Tie Phantom, which could be interesting. I think I actually would like to resource that and go with like Dr. Evazon plus the Rich Ward here. Or just play a Boba Fett. I'm going to play a Dr. Evazon though. Now we have multiple shielded units and uh, they're going to resupply. So we're just going to rich reward the mercenary gunship. That seems totally reasonable to me. Just use up all of our resources. And our opponent's going to have the Boba Fett flip next turn. So this can get a little bit tricky uh, very quickly. Double devotion, huh? So we could devotion up both of our units or we could covert strength or we can play a Boba Fett of our own. Because our units have shields and they don't have ECL, I'm trying to think of what Boba Fett could be playing here that will make it really, really bad for us. The card that I'm thinking of would be something like a Waylay when we devotion up our units. But I don't think we can play around that necessarily. So let's go ahead and devotion up the Crafty Smuggler. If they have Waylay, they have Waylay, and that's unfortunate. So they have Waylay. That was the card I was afraid of. Um, let's go ahead and devotion up the Dr. Evazon. Nothing you can really do about that. I could have played... Um, I could have tried to go for just playing a Boba Fett instead, but that would be pretty... kind of a weak play. Really looking for like Seventh Fleet Defenders when they go with Mercenary Gunship, but we didn't quite have that. They're going to attack for four here. And um, we have another Dr. Evazon that we've drawn. So not a great draw by any means, but we are going to be able to attack into their base for five points of damage. And then maybe get down a Crafty Smuggler and, I don't know, maybe the Covert Strength? We'll see. Devotion does a lot of work. But, unfortunately did just get waylay. Like we lost a lot of tempo off of that waylay. And because they got an early leader flip, it's really rough. I'm very happy that they don't have ECL because ECL would be really bad for us, um, but that's okay. Let's just get down the Gideon, use up all of our resources, get down a threat that is pretty, pretty scary, I'd say. And let's just claim initiative. I think they were trying to see if they i was going to spend four resources to hit their or steal their mercenary gunship that's not just a great play for us like it doesn't really do too much they have overwhelming barrage mm, that is really bad for us they're gonna be able to kill gideon and kill dr evazon and then leverage an additional five resources so this game is pretty much over at this point they had an excellent hand against us we were really looking for like seventh fleet defender i didn't play the lurking tie phantom out because it's not a great play in a mercenary gunship, but if you have something like um, a Seventh Fleet Defender, then it's really great. This game is completely over, though. We really can't come back from here. Uh, great hand from our opponent. 
Let's move on to the next one. Always when I say I'm not scared of something, it always bites me in the butt, huh? <laughs> not gonna bowl again. We have a Han yellow matchup, it looks like. The card I'm most scared of with this type of hand is going to be a um, Millennium Falcon. So if we see Millennium Falcon turn one, it's gonna be, I guess it's not that bad because Inferno 4 still would be able to trade with it, but we do wanna try to keep our units alive if we can. And I suppose if they have like an A-Wing or whatever, that could be a little bit scary since our Inferno 4 is not going to be able to trade with it until we put something like Devotion on it. Honestly, it's really not that big of a deal um, with Han Yellow. They could also go with like an Ezra Bridger on turn one or something of that note, and, and that could be pretty good for them as well. Usually when I see Heroism Red Yellow, I'm thinking Space Units. That's just because that's where most people go with um, those styles of decks gonna put rivals fall and long pike on the bottom rivals fall really not that great in this matchup when your opponent's playing a lot of cheaper units or playing a weaker leader flip long pike also is a little bit slower grindier so not really that interested in either of those dr evazon is our draw alongside fell the dragon fell the dragon could be interesting i don't think i care for lurking tie phantom it's not really that great in this matchup and I'm just going to attack in for two with the Inf uh, Inferno 4 to get us started. And I'm guessing that they're going to start off by attacking with Ezra. But we'll see. I want to get down this Boba Fett, most likely. They could use Han's action. Surprise strike. Okay. Uh, that was very aggressive. <laughs> they're not really going to be deploying to the board then. Let's see if they have a one resource play to, take, uh, to hit off the top of the deck. They could always discard it. They could, I mean, I suppose they could still deploy to the board, right? Because um, they could play a two resource play here to follow it up. Looks like they discarded a secondary Ezra Bridger on top of their deck. Okay, they're going to play a two drop. They have an A-Wing. Okay. Okay. A-Wing, not that scary. Going to go and resource this Inferno 4. I think I'm going to go with Dr. Evazon and Crafty Smuggler this turn, but I'm just going to kill my opponent's two units. We're on the back foot a little bit, and we have really nice value trades into our into their units, right? We get to kill their units and keep ours alive, followed up with some pretty nice plays. I might even want to go ahead and Devotion up my Boba Fetts, but because they attacked with Ezra first, I don't even think I care about that because... Boba Fett's not even going to take any damage by hitting Ezra since Ezra's already attacked. So I quite like that. Free kill on Ezra. We get to play two shielded units. And I mean, we are really ahead on board. A little bit behind on life. They're going to play a tech. Tech is really not that scary here. Dr. Evazon and Crafty Smuggler come down. And we just have a ton of upgrades in hand. I think I'm going to resource... <laughs> so I could resource this Fell the Dragon and just keep all three of the upgrades in my hand because we have so many units that the upgrades can go on to. I think that's okay. Keep in mind, we also have the Covert Strength, which gives us another option as well. And it looks like they're going to go in on this Chewbacca, which is totally fine because we're just going to, again, upgrade our units. Devotion. And then we're going to devotion our uh, snapshot reflexes the Dr. Evazon to knock out the Chewbacca. Tech, if he wants to get rid of the shield on Dr. Evazon, it's going to be pretty bad. Looks like they're going to try to get rid of the shield on Crafty Smuggler, but that's okay because now we can kill Tech for free, kind of, um, with the attack with Boba Fett. We're going to devotion up the crafty smuggler i'm doing this because they're kind of incentivized to attack the crafty smuggler with that i could have devotion up the inferno four as well but I'm, I'm i'm trying to like i'm okay with them killing these guys or killing my crafty smuggler the way i see us potentially losing this game not to say that we're behind at any for any reason but the way i see us losing this game is if they're able to Play a unit that kills Dr. Evazon that allows them to play a secondary unit. That's the way I see us losing this game. So if they're attacking our base or if they're going for um, like an attack on Crafty Smuggler, I think we're super far ahead. I don't really see us losing the game, which is why I decided to do that. 
So let's get in for damage. We are now even in terms of life total, and we still have a pretty nice situation for us going. Fell the dragon and seventh fleet defenders were uh seventh fleet defender was the draw. Now, I think again, the way we lose this is if they play some big units. So Fell the Dragon looks good. On another note, we have the Covert Strength plus 7th Fleet Defender, and I think that's just overall better, even if they do do the thing where I'm saying, like, they play, I don't know, Han Solo unit, get the kill Dr. Evazan, and then play, like, a 6-drop afterwards. That could be pretty good, and it looks like that's what they're doing. <laughs> it's exactly what I said that they were going to do. That is hilarious. Um, okay, so, yeah, they, they ended up going with exactly exactly what i said and uh we're gonna go ahead and just attack their base i'm gonna use gar saxon to kill han solo and then potentially covert strength him back up to speed but yeah that is actually pretty funny that is actually pretty funny they're gonna attack um that's totally fine let's go ahead and just get rid of oh hello okay let's get rid of their leader with the Boba Fett, and then we'll use Gar Saxon to finish off the Han Solo. <laughs> They're going to name 7th Fleet Defender. That's totally fine. Got to wait for our opponent to type something in the chat just to make sure that they're not going to name like Covert Strength or whatever. They're going to name 7th Fleet. Sure. Let's flip over Gar Saxon. And healing up Gar Saxon is going to allow us to um, keep him alive from the Kira. And uh, we're going to be able to get in for two as well. And I can't play this, remember, because they named Kira or named Seven the Fleet with this, which means it costs six. Here I can go ahead and resource most likely the Seven of the Fleet because I'd rather go Crafty Smuggler plus Gideon on this turn. It's funny because I was literally saying like the only way we lose this game is by exactly what I said was going to happen. So I'm happy that it ended up going the way I thought it was going to. At the same time, it's a little unfortunate, right? They're going to make us discard two cards. That's totally fine. Um, I am just going to, I think, kill. I think I'm just going to hit their base. They could play a four resource play. So I think I'm pretty safe just to attack with Gar Saxon here and ignore Kira. I'm tempted to put the Covert Strength over on this Inferno 4 because it's going to give plus 2 power. <laughs> All right. Well, they're going to go ahead and... If they use the Heroic's Rolf to kill Gar Saxon, that's fine. Don't really care about that. It's going to trade, and they're going to be left with no units on the battlefield, and we're going to be totally fine. They want to kill Boba Fett. That's also fine. Now they have multiple threats to deal with. We're totally fine. So, yep, they're going to do exactly that. We're going to smuggle out a Covert Strength, pump this up, make it a 4-4, four, four, and now we're going to be able to attack for 4. And we have two lethal threats on the board, which is going to make it so that uh, we're basically guaranteed to win. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I literally said the only way we lose this game is if they get down to Han Solo and then they follow it up with another big unit. They did not follow it up with another big unit, but uh, we they definitely turned the corner there with a Han Solo coming out. Um, I do think that that was pretty nice from them, but we we kind of covered our bases. And one of the big things was that they played units that we just traded with and kept our units alive, right? Killed their Ezra without losing a unit. Killed their Alien without using, losing a unit. Killed the Chewbacca without losing a unit. Um, killed the Tech without losing a unit. The only time they even got a, any sort of value out was the Han Solo. If their turn two was something a little scarier than just A-Wing, like if they had gone two drop, two drop, that could have been a little bit more scary. Or if they'd gone just three drop or a four drop instead of surprise strike a wing, then I think we would have been in a way worse spot because that's one of the things that makes Han scary is that they can get down more expensive units early or just leverage the fact that you can deploy a bunch of units, right? Next matchup is against Palp Red. So very interesting one. Might be a little bit more aggressively focused, aggressively slanted, I suppose I should say. Uh, I'm going to go to resource this Rival's Fall. Not exactly a matchup that I'm super excited about that card in. And we're just going to drop a Crafty Smuggler on turn one. Nice little 3-2 shielded. Ooh, I love that thing. It makes me so happy to play that. Same with Dr. Evazan. Again, um, I mean, look at this. If this was a normal Crafty Smuggler, we could not kill their Season Shore Trooper here and keep our Crafty Smuggler alive. That is insane, right? That is insane. And we're going to do that. Just remove any other unit that we have. They're going to resupply, it looks like. And we're going to get down a 3-5 shielded. 
So it's just the power of having Gar Saxon in the deck, right? Nothing too crazy. We didn't draw anything too crazy here. Um, I, I would say that we're actually not like super far ahead. And hey, look, client gets to kill. Doesn't take any damage. Sure. <laughs> and they're going to claim initiative. We're going to get down a Boba Fett. Um, get down Boba Fett. There we go. And we are kind of on track. Not going to play this Dr. Evazon. We're at the stage of the game where they could have like an open fire plus a combination of card or, or something to get rid of this and then just play multiple things. And then we are really, really far behind. Um, they are going to grab our Boba Fett, it looks like. And we're just going to play a Super Commando Squad and prevent them from killing any of our units. Traitorous, pretty decent. Um, defeat and upgrade. They have confiscate main deck. Okay. That's funny. Let's go ahead and attack their base for two. I did not expect confiscate. I'm going to be honest, guys. I'm going to be honest. That confiscate was not what I expected to see. Let's claim initiative. Uh, wow. Confiscate main deck. Uh, hilarious. Okay. <laughs> Let's go ahead and drop in our second Super Commando Squad. Do I want to do that? Yeah, let's just drop a second Super Commando Squad. Don't want to have any of our units damaged because they can flip Palpatine and do some nasty stuff there. Cell Block Guard, sure. Let's go ahead and flip over a Gar Saxon. I don't mind uh, getting our Super Commando damaged at this point. If that's the thing that they're stealing, I'm okay with that. They're going to pass. Um, we're going to go ahead and hit their cell block guard. Okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and attack them for two. And now we're still pretty in pretty good shape, right? Like if they flip Palpatine, take our super commando squad, we can kill it with the client. Um, and we still have our client's around which is pretty nice they have reinforcement walker hmm. okay reinforcement walker not like super scary let's go ahead and get down to gideon this is going to start passing around to experience tokens so now again if they flip super command or they flip palpatine to take our super commando squad we can start putting experience on stuff which is going to be really powerful and that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to attack um get an experience um on the super commando squad which is going to give it sentinel and prevent it from dying from emperor palpatine which is really really strong if they want to defeat the Reinforce Walker to kill my Super Commando squad, I'm totally okay with that. Um, let's just go ahead and... I think what I want to do is... Give Devotion over to... Gar Saxon. And then kill Emperor Palpatine. Um, I suppose I don't even necessarily need to do that, do I? I can attack for 12 or I can give another experience to my units. Yeah, I think I just kill Emperor Palpatine and I'll put an experience on um, the Gideon and then attack their base for six. I think I like having the additional experience. I really would love to be drawing more upgrades at this point and rather these crafty smugglers, but that's okay. It's okay. Let's go ahead and resource the Boba Fett. I think I would rather just go with um, Double Crafty Smuggler and Seventh Fleet instead of Seventh Fleet, the Boba, and a Crafty Smuggler. Now remember, we get to go ahead and return upgrades that are attached to units if they're upgraded. Overwhelming Barrage. Okay, well, they get to kill like my whole board, which is really unfortunate, actually. That's insane. That is the type of card that's going to let them win the game. <laughs> Jeez. I could have I could have killed the the uh, reinforcement walker I suppose, but that doesn't seem like a great play either. Man, that is disgusting. You know, deal two to Gideon. One one four. Wow, what a nasty nasty situation. Again, if I had some sort of seventh fleet defense or a covert strength or um a upgrade to put on my Gideon, then. That would be awesome. Um, Let's see here. I think I just attack into their base for seven because they're going to kill my Gideon. Open fire? What is this nonsense? 
This is disgusting. Their hand is insane for what they've got going on over there. Okay, you're going to attack our base. Um, we're going to play a bunch of shielded units. I could have gone with Long Pike, but it just dies to reinforcement walker. <laughs> what an insane, insane situation. And where are our upgrades? Where are our upgrades? Where's our rival's fall? Where's our fell of the dragon? <laughs> My goodness. My goodness. That is funny. What a nasty situation. They're going to hit our base. They're going to keep hitting us for six. Looks like let's attack their base for three. They have a second reinforcement walker. Oh my gosh. Give us some upgrades, right? Let's play a client. Let's smuggle out a long pike. Let's see if we got anything in the resource pile. Snapshot reflexes, Inferno 4. Okay. Would love to get an attack with this Lom Pike. Looks like we're not going to be able to. So I think here what I'll do is just... Jeez, they attack, they attack, and that's GG. There, there's nothing I can do here. Wow, what an insane overlying barrage into open fire. They had the, the, a great answer. My... The other thing I could have done was just attack their reinforcement walker and try to play around the overwhelming barrage. But the problem with that is that Palpatine lives. And if Palpatine lives, then they have another overwhelming barrage target anyways. And all my units take more damage than the reinforcement walker. So they just they just had a great answer to what we were doing. If we had a couple more upgrades earlier on, like the snapshot reflexes or the covert strengths to help us heal up and put more pressure on our opponent, then perhaps... Um, we were in a really good spot, but that overwhelming barrage was a really nice timed one and wrecked us. Okay, we've been having some fun, and uh, we're going to wrap it up here with this last game against Krennic Green. Pretty interesting hand. I think I'm going to resource the Rival's Fall, um, and I think the Takedown? Oh, man. I'm not a huge fan of Takedown in this matchup. I'm not even a huge fan of Dr. Evazon, but I guess we'll see where this goes. I like the Lurking Tie Phantom, but they start with an Inferno 4, so that's a little bit unfortunate. Gonna have to go with the 7th Fleet Defender instead. So Dr. Revisant's gonna come down. It's a 4-3. Pretty nice. Uh, got ourselves a Devotion and a Fell the Dragon, both of which are not exactly exciting cards. Fell the Dragon can be okay, especially if they're gonna be running Childson in their deck. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully they don't have a Power of the Dark Side. Looks like they have a Pike Sentinel. That's fine. We're gonna kill it for free. Nothing really happens there let's get a seven feet defender down and uh let's pass covert strength can go into the resource pile and uh we'll be able to lurking tie phantom plus snapshot reflexes do you want to get rid of this inferno four since lurking tie phantom will be online at that point and if they do go with power of the dark side here i am very tempted to get rid of the dr Amazon because i really want the lurking tie phantom on the battlefield um that is something that is pretty important i, I would say in this matchup they're gonna have a lot of takedowns, a lot of vigilances, super laser blasts, that type of stuff. And uh, well, generally, that's the thing that they're playing. And so having a lurking Tide Phantom on the battlefield is usually pretty good. Also, if they have a takedown, I wouldn't be surprised if they just use it on the Dr. Evazon. Huh. Interesting. Uh, even though they attack the Seventh Fleet Defender, I'm actually gonna attack with Dr. Evazon first because again, very likely okay well they're gonna play a star viper well i will trade with a star viper and i will play the lurking tie phantom and this may seem counterintuitive but i'm gonna put the snapshot reflexes on the tie phantom and the main reason for that is one their ecl targets are usually going to be um consortium star viper and inferno four if they want to get rid of the tie phantom the second thing is there's a good chance that they have make an opening in their deck and that could get a little bit tricky very quickly. It's going to attack in for six. They ECL'd out Gideon. Um, let's just go ahead and play a Gideon of our own. Overwhelming Barrage. Wow. That was a pretty nice one. Okay, we're going to claim initiative. They're going to have experienced up units. And, I mean, they are really quite far ahead now. Uh, okay. Interesting. We got ourselves Fenrau, Rich Reward. 
don't have any upgrades in our hand right now um let's just get in for six here let's uh let's flip gar saxon see what they've got they could have another overlaying barrage and if they do that's fine because they have to use it on gideon to kill my gar saxon and then um we can just get down a uh, lurking tie phantom and covert strength up the lurking tie phantom let's claim initiative here actually Ooh, tie advanced are is a really nice draw let's go tie advance pump up the lurking tie phantom so this attacks for seven Ooh. so what do we need to draw we can get up to seven so it's not quite enough what can i draw here they just had too much damage huh i suppose i'm not sure what i could draw but we can't attack here yeah double overwhelming barrage made it a little bit tricky i think i should have just gone with the earlier lurking tie phantom Ooh, snapshot reflexes what does that do for us we attack in for eight. Oh my gosh we're so close um we're so close yeah get in for eight wow gg <laughs> that was so close really really close game against that uh krennic deck the double overwhelming barrage ended up just being really, really quite excellent in that spot. Would have loved to have had um, an earlier space unit. Uh, I would have loved to start with an, like an Inferno 4 or stuff, but really, really solid games and uh, lots of fun with Gar Saxon Yellow. Let's talk about the deck here at the end. So what did we learn with Gar Saxon Yellow? Well, we had a lot of random matchups today. Overall, I'll say this, the cards that are really impressive are the cards that I mentioned at the beginning of the game. We saw a lot of scenarios where Crafty Smuggler and Dr. Evazon were these really menacing threats. We saw a lot of games where Seventh Fleet Defender was a menacing threat. The client having that extra power is extremely relevant. Passing around upgrades naturally in the deck is what you want to be doing with Gar Saxon. You don't really want to be play a unit, play an upgrade on that unit. That's not really what you want to be doing in these games. And the main reason for that is, well, it just is too hard to set up something like that while also being too action dependent. And what I mean by action dependent is not only do you have to play a unit, not only does it have to survive, but you also have to have an action to be able to play that upgrade on that unit and then have it survive that action from your opponent and then have another action to then be able to attack with it, which is your upgraded unit. And that's just too many actions to be able to get in effective combat, effective damage. This is a much better way to do it. Play a unit that immediately gets power boosted. Pretty straightforward, right? It's the same logic with Krennic and Death Trooper, right? Play a unit, immediately gets power boosted. That's kind of the whole idea. This is also a deck that benefits heavily from a sideboard. There's a lot of games where I don't talk about sideboard or a lot of videos where I don't talk about sideboard all that much. And that's because, yes, you can make out some very, very good changes, but it's not extremely relevant. Like you most often will be changing out two to three cards in any sort of given matchup. This is a deck where you'll be regularly siding out five to six cards every single game. Uh, that's because there's so many different options and there's so many different ways you could be building Gar Saxon Yellow. For example, a card like Devotion is a card that's not exactly particularly strong in any sort of mid-range slash soft control matchup. Uh, it can be pretty good, but it's a card that really works well against some of the meta decks, um, assuming you can time it well, where you can get that restore in, trade with a unit, and then get some value going there, like Sabine Green, for example, but not against, you know, the more slower pace games same with incinerator trooper that's really good in the tempo matchups play incinerator trooper play a snapshot reflexes kill their unit to keep this alive super strong right not that good in a deck that your opponent might be playing high toughness units etc velvet dragon really really good in matchups where your opponents are playing high powered units takedown the reverse is true if your opponent's playing sabine ren takedown can be pretty good to get rid of their sabine on the turn she flips uh, you can go down the board on a lot of these kind of niche cards and that's 
part of the symptom of playing Vigilance in a more aggressive shell is that a lot of the Vigilance cards are built for more controlling decks where you have a lot of options. And in a deck where you're trying to be a little bit more aggressive, that's where, you know, changing out a lot of these cards can be advantageous. Some of the options you can drop in the sideboard, Bazin Natal, attack opponent's hand, power of the dark side to have cheap removal in certain matchups, more copies, less copies of takedown or fell the dragon. You can kind of keep more in the sideboard and just take out whatever is kind of mediocre. Uh, copies of other upgrades that you might want to try, jetpack, uh, things like that based on the matchup and the other thing is having reliable threats so in some games you know you can get to the late game and maybe avenger is worthwhile so uh, that really really does shift based on the matchup and this is a deck that again really benefits from a sideboard let me know what you think in the comment section down below guys this is a really sweet list and i think i might be building this one in paper to bring to my local weekly um you know games just because i love I love upgrades and it was really fun to just play super strong units straightforward. I'll see you for the next video.